Alright. <coughs> Alright, guys, I'm not dead. I didn't jump in front of a fucking boss. I didn't jump off that beautiful balcony. I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm a bit bigger, which isn't necessarily better, especially when it comes to women. But, probably gonna say that, but I want you guys to know I've learned some insane things. I've got some good challenge highlights. It's coming at you in this show and I'm promising you it's fucking better shit than anything I've ever probably shown before. A bit biased because a lot of it's my stuff. But I'm not going to do the da na 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 da na because I think you've heard it too many times. Comment at the end of this video, yes if you want a new intro, no if you don't. And I will dance to some fucking romantic shit because it's Valentine's Day. Welcome to Junk Does Penny Stocking, everybody. Tim Sykes Challenge Highlights. The first one is a mega good episode, and it goes on to explain what these ETFs are and the VIX is and the fucking SPY and the uh, and the QQQ uh, and how to follow like the different kind of uh, tickers to see what's going on in the overall market. If you didn't realize, we're in a fucking crash. Uh, the second part is something from me. Uh, I've been really, really, really avidly tracking Excels. I've been getting up at 5 a.m. or 7 a.m. before work, doing a good two, two and a half hours, tracking different patterns, tracking different stocks, finding some findings, finding the findings. And it's all because this is how I got profitable initially. I was tracking setups and I was tracking how they moved. And then I stopped doing it and then I started losing again. So I'm going right back to what worked the first time. It's like being fucking reborn, coming out of admission, fucking remixing things hot out of the kitchen like I'm singing Ignition. R. Kelly sale, but I'll leave it at that because I need the toilet and it's not the type of one that you can hold in. Let's get into the learning. Okay, so this is Michael Good going over some basic overall market terms, just good in a crashing market uh, to explain what some of the instruments need, how to gauge how the overall market's doing. Uh, I'll highlight the best parts because it's a long part of a, a longer webinar. Okay, so here is the S&P 500, the SPY. Now, anytime people are talking about the overall market, the best, I find the best measure of the overall, overall market is the S&P 500. It's market weight at, uh, it's market cap weighted. So bigger companies have a bigger effect on the index. Smaller companies have a smaller effect. Uh, and it pretty much excludes the smallest companies. It's the 500 mostly biggest companies. And... It is much, much better as an index than the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is price-weighted uh, with some adjustments based on 30 hand-picked companies. Now, there's a very strong correlation between any index, stock index. So, notice DIA, the Diamonds, uh, which is an ETF based on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, is down 2.1, 2.2%. SPY is down 1.9%. If you want to look for sort of the broader market, smaller caps, look at the Russell 2000 index, and here it's down 1.7%. Normally, you would see small cap stocks down bigger than big cap stocks. What the heck is the VIX? If you want to look at the VIX index, let's go back to my other monitor here. VIX is an interesting index, and in and of itself, there's no way you can trade it. It's great. So here's the four-hour candles. Let's look at the daily candlesticks. Here's the daily candlesticks on the VIX. Now, you see it's doing absolutely nothing. 13, 12, 10, it closes... 10 somewhere back in here goes up a bit goes up a bit oh my god it spikes from 15 to 36 and very briefly hits 48 dollars what the heck does that mean well VIX of 48 is high what is the VIX people refer to it as the fear gauge of the market and that's in a sense a decent 
I think that's a decent, uh, very short, you know, not complete explanation, but it's a sense of what people use it as. The more volatile the stock market, the higher the VIX will be. The bigger the stock market is dropping, the higher the VIX will be. VIX is actually calculated based on put and call prices on the S&P 500 index. So <laughs> if you're looking at uh, the prices of puts and calls uh, out of the money options on the S&P 500, there's some sort of complex calculation you do and that gets what the VIX is. So basically the bigger moves that people are expecting in the S&P 500, the bigger the VIX is going to be. And people tend to expect bigger moves in the S&P and the market as a whole when the market is dropping. Why? If you have a bullish market, it's going to be sort of slow uptrend. If you have a bearish market, you'll have big down days and big up days. Yeah, which is pretty much exactly what we've saw just in the last few days. Big, big drops, panics, and then uh, big kind of uh, up days afterwards. And I thought it was important because we're always seeing TVIX or VIX-related stocks, ETFs, on scanners and people must be thinking like what the hell is this it's not a company it's something else and it's a very good uh, introductory guide welcome to spastic webinars brought to you by fucking jeevan i'll read guys so basically it took a big loss and i originally got profitable by um tracking setups fact the first setups i started tracking up our first green day setups it's, that's an old one then I tracked all these gap and crap as and I quickly realized that stocks that gapped up spiked uh, and then uh, would fail and then they'd fail even more on the, the, the day two and this would be the lowest point on the, the first day. So even though a stock gapped up and spiked, generally the average would be 8% and then it would fail and when I realized this, I just started shorting everything that gapped up 40-50% that had a bad long-term chart and made some good money. Then I got a bit cocky, got a bit ahead of myself and um, I started... Um, when the market changed, I didn't. Uh, I just started playing other trades and I started losing. And then when I, then I started playing gap and craps wrong, not the way I used to make money off them. So I've started adapting to a change in market, shorting all of the gap and craps. These are every single gap and crap in February so far, uh, from the fourth or fifth when I started tracking them. And I'm going for, and then I'm also tracking first gap down day. And uh, I just want to show you how how I really analyze them because it's it's quite important to say, okay, well, in February out of the stocks that you've tracked of gap and craps uh how many crapped how many kind of held and how many were like gap and goes and 50 percent of stocks that gapped up more than 20 percent are gap, gap and craps this may change it's an early sample right now and and if the stocks that gap, gapped up over 50 percent then how many of them like kind of crapped uh, the stocks that gapped up more than 50 percent 75 percent of them failed where from the stocks that gapped up like under 50%, only 50% of them failed and actually 25% of them went ran where 0% of them ran that gapped up over 50%. And then like how many opened red, how many opened green and from that, if the ones that opened red, uh, did they end up red on the day overall? Uh, how many stocks that opened red actually gapped and crapped? Um, well, 42% uh, went red in the morning. So very, very early stuff um, and still going through it, but I'm going to literally take gap and craps to the fucking next level and over extended gap downs and literally provide the fucking blueprint to how to trade gap and craps. Because uh, I'm very good at Excel's data analysis. Not very good at it, but I'm just interested in it. Uh, and I wanted to share this as a, a lesson brought to you by Jeevan. And no, this is not for sale. I've got so much more work I want to do to it. And I'm going to leave you with just saying it's fucking Valentine's Day. Love your partner. Love yourself. Like, um, dating. I'll show you guys. This is fucking random. It's going to log on to Bumble. Bumble's one of my favorite fucking hunting chicks apps. And uh, I'll find Gemma. It's called Victoria. Should not get that name wrong. I hope she doesn't watch. Like, this episode is dedicated to her. She's a pretty hot blonde girl. I'm gonna meet her for the first time in a couple of days. I just wanna say live the dream, keep studying, make sure that you fill out your own Excel because honestly, that is my one true love. Um, and it's what got us profitable the first time and it's what will cause this French fucking renaissance. I'll see y'all later, Excel style.
cutting fresh out the kitchen. Mama. Woo.